telephones, bars. Traveling by rail was the most comfortable and elegant mode of transportation. Trains sliced through the night at full speed, highballing to their next destination while the passengers ate, slept, read, or played cards. It was as if the state of Missouri was moving, not the train. The New York Central's famed 20th Century Limited looked beautiful and powerful even before the streamline design was added by Henry Dreyfus. The Milwaukee Road boasted a fleet of 464s designed by Otto Hüller, a streamlined Hiawatha running from Chicago to the Twin Cities was called the world's most popular train running on the Milwaukee Road. Then there was the Pacific Limited, pulling a load of passenger cars. Steam trains were still the universal method of transportation all over the world. In England, particularly, it was said you could set your watch to the whistle of the trains. Depots like Victoria Station became as famous as New York's Grand Central. English trains ran day and night to keep the island nation alive. The birthplace of America's first engines kept refining the art of steam. And as in America, the locos in Britain delivered everything, from mail to people to Jersey milk. Always a dramatic sight, the moving platforms and cars of a roaring steam engine often provided exciting backdrops for mysteries, like Agatha Christie's Murder on the Orient Express, Ian Fleming's From Russia with Love, the Sherlock Holmes stories. In this early Alfred Hitchcock thriller, the romance and danger of the rails was heard for the first time. The clickety-clack of rail ties beneath the wheels, the constant chug of the powerful pistons, the wail of the whistle splitting the night. Britain's pride and joys were the Princess Coronation class engines, built in 1938. The massive boiler for this modern 462 engine, number 6207, had a great area of 45 square feet and lots of tubing. 
As with most streamliners, the casing made daily maintenance more difficult when you had to get behind this teardrop-shaped metal shell. American Rail fans had heard about the coronation and asked for it to appear at the New York World's Fair in 1939. What the British sent instead was the Duchess, an identical sister train, with a new nameplate that said coronation. To pass American standards, a warning bell was fitted and a headlight. When the engine was raised for its voyage across the Atlantic, it almost plopped into the River Thames. The dock workers managed to get it back on track. Whether Coronation Scott or Duchess, the engine toured America and looked fine. War broke out in 1939 and the engine remained in America, being seen by over three million people until it was shipped back to England in 1942 for the war effort. The celebration of trains at the New York World's Fair was a steam lover's dream. The New York Central's first streamliner, the J3A, was there, and Canadian National's equally impressive streamliner, built for the visit of the King of England to Canada. There were only 10 of these Dreyfus designed J3As with driving wheels a full 79 inches high. These locos were reserved for first class runs like the 20th Century Limited. The Baltimore and Ohio showed off their duplex drive engine, the George H. Emerson, a 4444, the only one ever built. And Pensy's pride and joy was this futuristic S1, a 6446, designed by Raymond Lowy, 140 feet long. In the 1930s, a new type of engine raised its streamlined head. Old-timers scoffed at these engines. They moved fast on flatlands with short trains, but it wasn't surprising to see an old steam engine huffing and puffing to help a diesel up a high grade. In the 1930s and 40s, the biggest engines could cost as much as $200,000 each, and a loaf of bread cost 25 cents. I don't have to tell you what a loaf of bread costs today, or what it would cost for a new steam engine. But even after the intrusion of diesel, steam remained a mainstay of the rails, especially along the freight moving department. Here's an Illinois Central 2800 class 2102, coming into Wallace Yard at Freeport where an Illinois Central 482, engine number 2438, waits for her to pass by. These strong engines are hooked up to reefer cars, refrigerated carriers of food bound for the East Coast. And a muscular 2100 class 482 may start slow, but develops a full head of steam on the way out of the yard. Mountain railroads like the...